All right, so let's open up your machines. So they're like my machines. So you're in your big red or blue, whatever color. If I didn't get to attack your theme when I was on your machine a second ago, make sure you're on the screen that looks like this. That's probably the only time we're going to do something on the host. Our virtual machine hosts that's nested virtualization of Hyper-V with your two domain controllers that we created in the previous session. Yay! That was fun to say. Let's do it again. Everybody cool? Cool, cool, cool. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder on our desktop because this is disposable. We gotta load these virtual disks from the outside. So our goal is to make some virtual disks on the outside of our virtual machines, our Hyper-V machines. And then we are going to mount them from the outside and show you how RAID works. And then we're gonna try to do the same thing from the inside and show you how it doesn't work. Sound fair? Sound fun? And then I'll show you with my real hard drives on my computer doing the same thing, how you can get performance, increase performance, and what they all really do. It'll be fun because I can destroy my solid state drives a little bit for you. It's love. It's a love relationship. All right. So I'm just going to put this up here for now, right there, there. All right. Get out of the way. So we're going to use just some basic Windows tools that are on Windows 10. So you know how to do this on your home computers. Uh, we're just going to right click on here. So the tool we're going to use is disk management. And if you've played around in here and gone through some of the stuff, you'll realize all of these tools, are, except command prompt, are actually sitting there inside the computer management also. So I'll open up disk, man disk management really quick as soon as my tongue decides to work with my talking. And this will show us the disks we have on our computer. So I've given us, looks like 120 gigs to work with on our host systems that I pre-built for everybody. Uh, just click out and click back in. Uh, control M, I think. Here, one sec. Anyone who wants to what I'm talking to, I'm talking to students. Control A. But yeah, Control G should put you back in your system. If not, just restart it. Eventually, it'll come back. All right. So I'll put this over here. I'm going to snap this to the right really quick because I want to show you guys something. I'm going to open up computer management. At least I think I am. There we go. And I'll snap this to the left of my window like that. So you'll see these are all pretty much the same tools. A lot of the tools that are sitting right here when you right click are inside of here. So, And the one we're going to be playing with is under storage disk management right here. So this is actually the same as what we see over here. But we just don't have all this stuff to confuse us. So we're just going to go straight to the snap in that we want. I'm going to take this over here. Cool. So what we want to do is we're going to create some virtual disks. So don't worry about keeping up with me because this is I've recorded it once and this will be the second recording for you guys. So I'm just going to go to actions and I'm going to create a virtual hard disk right here. So this is going to give us our first option is where do we want to store it? We're going to store it on our hard drive right here. Hard drive folder that we made on our desktop. So I'm just going to go browse, go to my desktop really quick. So we'll click on my hard drive and I'm just going to call this hard drive HDD. Okay. It's going to automatically put VHD, but I want VHDX, so I'm just going to pull that down. And I'm going to hit save. So that's where it's going to save it. That's how it's going to save it. It hasn't saved it yet. Then if we come here, we want to do our size. We're going to make these 30 megabytes, well, 30 gig. So 30. Now, if you notice that drop down box on the side, it says megabytes for some reason. I don't know why you would use that. But yeah, gigabytes and terabytes for your option. We're going to use gigabytes. Now, VHDX have a maximum files supported disk of up to 2,040 gigabytes or two terabytes. Okay. So we'll probably never use that. We don't need to use that. We're going to use VHDX. This allows us to have dynamic expanding. So it'll only be as big as whatever we put in it. 
So it's like a vacuum sealed garbage bag. You can hold a lot, but it's only going to be as big as what we put inside of it after we vacuum seal it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit okay. And it's going to make that disc and it automatically put it in here. It's not initialized and it's not online. There's two things we got to do to make that work. But before we start playing with that, we're going to come over here and we're going to cheat. So you'll notice it's right here. So we're going to copy this. So the funny thing that happens here, if I copy that, you'll see when we go in there, even though this is 2012R2 and our virtual machine is 2012R2, since we have this with the desktop user experience, it's going to act, act a lot more like uh, 8.1. So if I try to copy that, so I right clicked it, I went to copy, right? I try to do control V. Oh, now it's going to work. All right. Whoever watches my video from this morning, that didn't work. Okay. So that's what I wanted it to do. So, but now I can just do control V, control V, control V, and it makes copies of that drive. So again, watch the video from this morning and that didn't work. So consistency with Microsoft. So what I want to do is I'm, I'm not even going to mess with naming these. Okay. It does, it's not going to matter, but what we, we want to do is we're going to come over here to disk management. And for that first one that we did, because we only need four for our virtual machine. Okay. We don't need the fifth one. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to show you what the original one I made, this 30 gig. When we click on it, first we got to right click. When we're doing this, when we're initializing and bringing these online, we don't click over here. See, there's nothing that we can do. We want to come over here, right click. First thing we got to do is initialize it. So it's saying, hey, I'm attached. I'm here. Do something. It's going to say what kind of partition tables. Going back to A+. So MBR, you're going to do four partitions, right? You can do many, many more on GPT. Anybody want to tell me how many you can or want to Google how many partitions you can do on GPT? Let me know. I'm going to hit OK. And now you see how we lost some of the storage on here, right? It went from 30 gig to 29.88. Because it has to put these in blocks and those blocks take up some space and the format and takes up space. 128 partitions. Sounds about right. I think I said the wrong number this morning, but I wasn't 100% sure. It's either 128 or 256. It was one of those. So. so now that this is online, it's still not formatted yet. It's got partition tables, so the drive knows how to communicate how big it's block. Well, not the blocks. We haven't measured the block sizes yet. Next, we need to tell it what format. The two main basic ones are you got fate 32 and ntfs these are the two most common ones now when we're doing linux we have all kinds of different ones we get to play with but just for our purposes fate 32 and ntfs right here is just going to tell us how much of this disk so we could partition it off right here we're going to use the maximum and let's just call this i'm just call it z put it at the end of the list so NTFS, allocation units. So these are like the block sizes. So in old windows, when you got to see how it's doing uh, defragging, this is what it's moving is. It's moving these blocks where they need to go so they're in the closest order so that the read-write heads don't have to move a long distance to get to your data. So if you have like really small file sizes of everything you're doing is like small text files, you're doing little scripts and stuff. You probably want the smallest size because you don't want one uh, bit to take up 512 just for writing one. So for, if you had something that took up one bit, it's still going to take up the real estate of 512. Same thing. If I have one bit and I set this to 248, it's going to take up. I mean, the 2048 is going to take up the full 2048 space, the real estate. So remember I was talking about that garbage bag vacuum sealed? Well, this is the opposite. You throw it in there, that, that garbage bag is inflated. It's taking up all that space no matter what you throw in it. So we're just designing the size of the storage container that our information can fit in, that the computer can go around on file and read it and piece it together into information that goes through our processor into our eyeballs. So 
for this, I'm just going to leave it default. And I'm just going to name it test for now because we're not doing anything with it. Make sure you have perform a quick format checked. If you don't, this can take forever. It'll format every little bit. It'll zero out everything. This just says this is what you want to do. So I'm going to hit finish. So you see this is blue. So it knows it's a virtual disk. So I just gave myself 30 gig. I really didn't. But if I go and look at my server manager, it just added 30 gig to my total storage. So if I go to local, it'll be right here. So we had 120, right? We have like what, 150 now, right? See that? It says I have 150 total storage. So I just made a virtual disk that's sitting on the exact same hard disk that was there before. So I don't really have that much storage because when I max out my 120, I'm not going to have that much to go to. So that's the cool, the beauty of auto uh, self expanding, the shrinking. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you in our Hyper-V. We're going to do those other ones that I created right there. I'm not going to go fancy and go rename them. It's not going to be important. So I'm going to close this for now. I've used that one, so I can't use that one again. So I'm going to open up my Hyper-V. And I'm going to put these on DC2. So we could also create these inside of our machines. When you turn these on, if they weren't already on, start DC1 first. That's your domain controller and then DC2, just so they talk properly with each other. And I'll start that one. Now communication between the two aren't going to be too important for what I'm doing right now. So I'm actually going to turn it on because we can do this when it's running. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not like the network card. It won't break the hard drive. Wakey, wakey. It's sleepy. Got Took too many pills. And then pop quiz, how many dots are right there? <laughs> All right, well, while that's doing that, I'm going to come up here. Oh, yeah, just because I'm trying to do something, right? There we go. All right. We're in here right now. I'm just going to open up the same thing we had outside of this, inside. There's a part inside the server manager we can do this stuff too, but I'm going to use the same one on the outside just so we get familiar with that tool. As soon as our please wait is done. You know what, you sneaky little thing? I ain't waiting for you. I'm coming up here. I'm going to go to settings. And right here on SCSI, don't change this one. You'll break it. Do not click on that and then start doing stuff. Click on SCSI controller, hard drive, add. We're going to go browse. And we're going to go to our desktop. We made that HDD folder, right? Right there. Now, I wish I could just like highlight all these, but you can't. So I'm going to start from the bottom, work my way up. I'm going to say open. Apply, add, browse, now I have to go all the way back. Just do that till I have all four of them in there. But wait, I already threw one in the oven. I didn't. And then one more. And then this born part will be done. This born part. There's many more born parts ahead. Do 
Hello. Hello. Thank you. Apply. And OK. Get into our systems here. So now it's going to think I put four physical drives. Now when we look at it, it knows that they're virtual hard disks, okay? Just like the outside knows it's a virtual hard disk, but it won't be light blue this time. So I'll let this finish doing its little scan thing, its little Knight Rider. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. That's what I want. So this is the one where if we wanted to do it on our machine, not on our machine, but from server manager, we can do stuff from right here. This will see what we just did. So you see how these are all on here now? They say they're offline. Our main one's online. But this one says offline, 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 offline. Over here, Microsoft Virtual Disk. So it knows it's a virtual disk, right? So we'll find out later that it won't let us do RAID if we make those disks on our server. So I'm going to close this because that's the last we need to see that. Because again, we're going to use the tool in the bottom left hand corner. We're going to cut shortcut to it right here and we're just going to go to disk management. And I see no red, so I'm good. I know I'm on the right, right machine. So right here, this is, this is what's actually live and active and being used on our computer. Down here, you'll see, you'll see it says unknown 30 offline, unknown 30 offline. So we got to put these online. So now it says it's online, but it's not initialized. If I initialize it, it only sees one disk. So for what we want to do, we don't want to do that. So I'm going to turn that off and let's take all of these other ones online. And you'll see why in a sec. So now to come back to this disk one, go to initialize. Now it shows all of them. So it'll do them all in one shot. That's why we want that. And it automatically says, hey, I want GPT. So now it's gonna put them all with GPT, partition tables, guided partition tables, and, but they're all unallocated. Now it's gonna give us options that we can do raids. So see how now we have options. Also note, these are gray, like a physical hard disk, and not blue, like a virtual hard disk. So we have simple volume, which is a regular hard disk like this one right here. Spanned volume, well, we put all these together. When this one fills up, it goes to the next drive. Fills this one up, goes to the next drive. Fills this one up. That's how spanned volume works. So we'll get the full storage of all of these. So we'll have like 90 gig, right? Then we have stripe volume, kind of similar, but when it writes, this is uh, pretty much RAID zero, right? Striped. So it's going to do information here, 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 here. It's just going to run across these really quick. So then when we have to access, ask, eh, access that information, we get to read use three different read write heads capabilities and will increase our speed. The downfall is if this drive dies or any of these drives die in this volume, in this RAID volume here, we lose the entire drive. So all three of these would equal like drive D up here. If one of those died, it's gone. And then there's RAID 5. RAID 5, for some reason, we can do it on a server, but we can't do this one on Windows 10. Okay, I'll show you that later with real drives. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do RAID 5 first. And hit next. So I'm going to add these disk sets to it. One, two, three. So we have four total. I'm going to go next. This tells us the maximum available that we're going to be doing on each drive, not just one, but that's all of them. The total volume, 91,770. That's how much they're all getting added together here. So 
I'm going to hit next. We'll just call this drive Z again. And we'll go next. We'll just say RAID 5. So we know it's RAID 5. Don't. Now, remember when I did it on the other one? It, it automatically checked this quick format. I didn't have to click it. Make sure you click it or this is going to take forever. Just let you know this will convert the selected basic disk to a dynamic disk. It will destroy anything that was on there prior. It's thinking, it's doing it, it's done. Now they're syncing up. So this is going to treat all those disks like they're one disk and it's going to be really fast. I can't show you a speed change because these are on the same hard drive, okay? I will show you in a little bit the speed change on this. So you can see right now it's counting how these are all synced up with each other. So I'll let that finish. And what we're going to do is we're going to write something on it. We're going to break a disk and see if we can still get our information, okay? So write 5 should have redundancy, right? Cool. Twenty-three percent. Twenty-two. There's nothing on it. <laughs> it's a blank disk. Uh, it'll get there. I was never a in sync fan. Yep, that's right. I did a bad joke. More of a convergency. Convergence. All right, you. 38%. We're almost there. I swear this went faster this morning. I bet I can still write to it when it's doing this. So let's see. Yep, there it is right there. So I can go to it. I can right click on it. I can go new. I can put a folder on it. Hey, you. Come over here. Do a text file. Put a bitmap on there. Maybe let's put a contact in there. Huh? Ah, oh, I don't want All right, there you go. There's a contact. Happy. All right, so I'm going to go back up. Up, oh, right here. And notice it says, yeah, we have pretty much 90 gig of space on that drive. It's not a real drive, but it don't know that, right? You don't know. 63%. But, oh no, something went wrong. That went offline. Uh-oh. Failed redundancy. No. Come over here. Oh, look. It still works. So let's see. Let's take that one offline. We got two drives. It doesn't like two drives. So we must have at least what? That's weird. It looks like there's more disks there than I actually put in here. So if I put these ones back online, that one. We get our drive back. So 
that one back online. Okay, cool. So what it was showing me was that the sync was broken and it was actually showing me the, the Z drive over here. So if we want to rebuild this, we have to right click and tell it to reactivate disk. And now it'll start syncing them back up again. So does that kind of help with how that works? Okay. So now I'm going to break it. I'm going to say, I'm not going to let it finish syncing because there's, there's no point. Uh, I'm going to say delete volume and bye bye. They're all unallocated. So now if we did striped, I'm just going to next, uh, no, 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 next my way through it. So this one has no redundancy. The thing to striped is right zero. Okay. And it's done. So this one's supposed to give us more speed, more performance out of everything. Now we're reading and writing all these at the same time. <coughs> There's no redundancy though. So going back to our happy little folder over here, maybe. Double clicked it too many times. Now it says we have 119 gigabytes. It's a lot more, right? So the other one, we lost one for so we could store parity. So we lost some storage on RAID 5, right? Because we're at 90, uh, roughly 90. So one whole drive had to be able to back up all the parity stuff. So in here, again, I'm just going to put a folder here because this ain't going to work once I kill something. So I'll put that here. We're in striping. So if this drive failed, they all fail. See? It's gone. So that's the disadvantage is you'll lose everything if you lose one drive in that array. This is how my computer set up at home because I don't store anything that I want to keep on my computer. I store it on USB. I store it in the cloud. I store it not attached to my system. That way, if I get a lightning strike, my system fails, it catches on fire, I don't lose it. So anything that's important that I want to keep, I don't keep it here. You can keep it on OneDrive, Dropbox, Keep it anywhere but on your computer. So just that one failed and the whole drive failed. So we'll come back up here. I'm just going to come here. I'm going to delete volume. It's going to make that thing disappear. It should make that disappear. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Operation failed because I broke it. Put this one back online. And now they're like, hey, everything's missing. Delete the volume. Yep. So he was looking for those disks that are gone now. So then we have mirror, right? Which we know as RAID 1, right? So we click on RAID 1. We hit next. You can only do two disks, which sucks. With this version of it. The Microsoft software version of RAID, we can only add one to that. See? So that's one thing to know. If you're going to do it, you can only do two disks. So I'm going to hit next. Now you see right here, though, the total volume is still just the size of one disk because it's a mirror. We don't get to gain anything by adding more disks to it. All it is for redundancy. So if one disk fails, we can still keep going. So I'm going to go next. I'm going to perform quick and I'm going to go next. No jokes. Next. All right. Cool. And see how these all have a different color too. They're color coded for what they're doing. So now we have that volume, volume D. Come over here. 
I'll go over there D. Once again, I'll put a folder in it because it's the quickest thing to do. Come back over here. I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to take half of this offline. Offline. Build redundancy. But come on over here. Still works. We still have a D drive. So let's see. Can I attach this to that? Let's see. Right click on here. Reactivate volume. The run disk after it becomes available. Okay. So let's see. Can we take this and attach it to it? Looks like no. So say we delete this one, what's going to happen? Looks like you're going to want to save your information and then rebuild it again. <laughs> We go to that, put that online. Go to this, reactivate. All right, so right here, there's an option that says import foreign disk. Group one of one, disk two, okay. And that fixed it. Notice it changed the color too. So next I'll show you guys how these actually do increase performance. Okay. So you can't buy this at your 7-Eleven at the shelf. It's that wrong, wrong kind of increased performance. Okay. So for this. Uh, let me pause. Let me stop this recording real quick and then I'll make it. No, I can just record over on this side. I'm going to minimize this. Oh, it's not going to show anything. Okay. There we go. So now I'm going to try to break my real hard drives for you guys. Okay. Cause it's not good to keep rewriting solid states, but Hey, I think you guys are all about done. Uh, don't save. That's done. All right. Cool. Hide that. Cool. I'm going to do the same thing on Windows 10. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go over to disk management just like we just did. So I have this drive, the speed drive. So I'm going to come up to one because there's nothing on it right now. I'm going to delete the volume. I don't know why I dragged this over here. Let me put this back in my happy place over here. And then come over here. If you're trying to adjust these things to screens, drag to your top and it'll show you if it's going to go full screen. Now it's showing quarter. And now if I drag it down, it says half of the screen. So, and then I want that to be another half of my screen. Cool. So let's just run a quick benchmark really quick. I'll just do a simple volume on this. Next, next, next. Quick format. Next, next. All right, so that's just formatting one of them. I have four Samson solid state drives, okay? My main one, my C drive. Huh, why is it down there? Whatever. My C drive, this one right here, <laughs> that one's an M2 drive. So that's a really fast drive. That's just one drive that's really fast. So I use... Flash bench. Where did I put it? On my desktop. Hmm. Wherever that folder is right there, that's where it is. Here. Whatever. Open that folder. It's in downloads. Of course it's in downloads. There it is. All right, so this is the software I use to test hard drive speeds, USB stuff when I'm doing reviews. 
So I'll show you right now my C drive. I'm going to benchmark my C drive. I was getting over 2,000 megabytes a second on my C drive, but the write speed is 1,768 megabytes per second. That's an M2 drive going through PCI Express. Remember, that doesn't go through a south bridge. And then that D drive by itself will be around 500. So I'll benchmark it. So 495. So that's going through SATA, which actually does go through your south bridge. It's fairly stable, though. That was really smooth, right? It doesn't have an operating system running on it. This one has an operating system on it. So that's going to give us a benchmark. That's how one of these drives work on their own, okay? I'll put this over here. I'm going to delete that volume. I don't know why that's saying disk zero for that. That one should be disk zero, but uh, we'll find out later. All right, so I'm going to delete the volume. So now when I right click, I'll have the option to do everything except five. See, I have no RAID 5 options. There's four drives, real drives, no RAID 5. So I'm going to do spanned, okay? I'm going to add all my availables. They're all the exact same drives. You can just have D drive. You can have that. I want a quick format. Say yes. And then we're going to run the same test. So since I'm doing this in span, should I have a performance gain? What's this going to do? Do the peanut gallery. Hello? Anybody still in class? Am I going to get a performance game doing spanned? Yes? No? What's our guess? All right. Lee says get some gains. Kelly says yes. Remember, we're doing spanned. All right, cool. Let's find out. Let's run the benchmark. Looks like it's just a hair, just a hair faster than a single drive. It's getting 512. The other one is about 490 something, right? So there's a slight gain, but not much. So I'm going to kill this again, delete the volume. It'll break them all for me. Right click. Now we're going to do a striped volume. Hit next, add them all. Make sure I do quick format. Next, finish. Yes, we know. But that was really stable though, right? Nice clean curves. Now again, we'll throw the C drive on top of that. That's how much faster my M2 is. Stable, not quite. But fast, yes. Once you get down to these, it's just because that's the size of the file it's writing. So. Now that we have this on striped, Let's see what our performance gains or losses are on this. I'll put this back to D. And I'm going to run it. Look at that. Now we're right in between the M2. But our read writes are pretty much the same. And we can run it again. So we got a lot of performance gain on that, right? We're at 1,730 megabytes a second instead of just pushing past 500. And again, that's megabytes, not megabits. Capitals. <coughs> so if you want to increase the performance of your system and get faster read-writes and you can't afford an M2, you can put a bunch of SATAs and RAID, put them as striped RAID. And you get those gains. Just remember, if any of those drives fail, you lose everything. Okay? There's trade-offs for everything. 
Now, Windows can't do like RAID 10, RAID 6. It doesn't have software versions of that. So we can't do that. That's where we'd put like a controller card and it'd be hardware controlling it, which is faster and better. So, and then again, we know how Mira works already. It won't work any different. It'll just be the same speed as OneDrive. So hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit and understanding how these little settings can change and how you can use them for redundancy or for performance gains. If you have a gaming computer, yeah, do this. Save your, anything that you want to save, save it on a USB drive. Save it on another drive that's a mechanical drive. But this will even increase your speeds if you're using non-mechanical drives. If you're using regular hard drives, you'll still get the read two times whatever the first drive is. Now, at a certain point, you can only be as fast as your processor can handle it. So imagine if we were doing four M2 drives. This could be really fast, right? So, and again, there's the drives that I'm using if you're curious. So those ones are the 860 QVO, one terabyte. My C drive is the 960 Evo 250. So I think that'll be done for the video. I'll turn the video off and then let's see if you guys have any questions.